Welcome and a very happy new year to you. The clip you've just been listening to is from A New Carol by Thomas Hewitt Jones and is one of the pieces featured in Sunday by Sunday issue 94. Sunday by Sunday magazine is the RSCM's liturgy planner available to members of the RSCM. Issue 94 covers the period from the beginning of January and finishes at Passion Tide. It includes Valentine's Day, which falls on a Sunday this year, and I shall be talking to Chris Thorpe, one of Sunday by Sunday's regular contributors, about how to make the most of St Valentine in lockdown. An anthem particularly suitable for St Valentine's Day is Faith, Hope and Love by RSCM composer Joanna Forbes Lestrange, and I shall be talking to her about her recent compositions, including Words from the Cross, a beautiful anthem for Passion Tide. Finally, since April, we've been working with the Church of England and St Martin in the Fields to produce music resources which can be found on A Church Near You, the Church of England's resources website. I shall be talking to Andrew Eris, Director of Music at St Martin in the Fields, about the resource hub. We have also been working closely with the Church of England to provide regular updated guidance for choirs and musicians during Covid. This guidance can be found on our website and it will be regularly updated as and when the government makes new pronouncements. I'm joined now by Chris Thorpe, a vicar in the Litchfield Diocese and also a member of the Sunday by Sunday team. Hello Chris. Hello, lovely to see you. And you, and a happy new year to you. Um, what, uh, the, um, the article in the issue 94 of Sunday by Sunday that you've written um, is about celebrating St Valentine's Day. Yes, uh, on, which it is, comes uh, on a Sunday, it comes on a Sunday this year. Yep, yeah, which is a, a very rare occurrence, I suppose one in seven or eight or something. Um, and it's a really interesting thing because uh, St Valentine of course has become uh, very much a secular uh, event and has been adopted worldwide um, and you're proposing to sort of take it back into uh, into our realm of, of church services and a way of attracting people in. How uh, Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, to re-inhabit what was once a, a, a Christian feast. Um, one of my things is, is really to try to identify where people are connecting with, with life and love and wherever we can to connect with the Christian story. So um, there are so many people that, that take, uh, that, that find St. Valentine's Day um, important in the sending of cards and the marking of love, that um, it, it's a good place. And interestingly, I, I, I always um, post quite heavily around that time and do get a lot of people who've just got engaged on St. Valentine's Day. And I, I always send a post out saying, have you thought about getting married in church? And it, we always get some, some people coming back to us, which is great. So it's clearly a fruitful area to work in, but I think there's more we could do. And I think with it being on a Sunday this year, it gives us an ideal opportunity. Although because of the COVID, it's going to be a bit different to how I, I imagined it. Yeah, you, I mean, you go into some, some details about things like uh, cafe church and uh, social media, as you said. Uh, what what how are you going to adapt things to to work with uh, St Valentine in lockdown? Well, one of the things we'd imagined we would do were we able to meet together was was to put on a, a lovely supper and to have a speaker who would chat would talk about love, because falling in love is is something that is absolutely fundamental to being human, and. And I think we've got something to say about that, but more significantly, we've got something to say about staying in love. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that, but what we can do, I think, is to use that question about falling in love and staying in love. And to, I'm gonna, I, what I'm gonna be able to do, I think, is to, is to do quite a lot on social media. And so we'll, in the weeks before, we'll be doing some provoking sort of posts and try to get some response going and try to get people um, commenting and questioning. And, and I think one of our aims over the, the, 
the lockdown period um, has been to try to reach out to a much wider audience for the um, online worship. So uh, that's a great question and a great way to, to draw them in. I th I'm, what I will do, I think, is perhaps interview a young couple who, if they're prepared to, um, have just fallen in love or who are just about to get married. And I think perhaps in, interview a couple who um, have perhaps had a long and a fruitful relationship and just to see what what wisdom they got for each other. Mm, lovely. Um, I mean, last year I played for two weddings, um, just you know, in the very brief uh, yeah. opportunity that we had. And, and we, you know, we thought last year that come this year, we would be avalanched by, uh, by weddings and you know we'd be all to all weddings uh, but given the state with you know with the virus it, it's it's looking a little less likely now isn't it um, and whether we'll I mean, my brother got got married last year um, and was only allowed 30 people um, and you know because my my wife is uh, uh, um, has very bad asthma she you know we weren't able to join and yeah. celebrations which was very very sad for us and probably I, hopefully sad for my brother as well but uh, uh, you know those sort of restrictions could well be in place in this year's wedding season um, yeah. do you think there's uh, you know ha is there a way of, of helping couples through that you know that that's been so true that that a lot of people were, were planning to be married in 2020 because of the sort of the the, the number 2020 and we, we we had so many people cancel their weddings i had so many people just before lockdown sitting in the study and just weeping with with the, the pain having planned a wedding for perhaps two or three years in yeah. detail and then they they rebooked for 20 um, later in 2020 and now they've rebooked for 2021 and we've had some rebooking again because it's continuing into the second half of 2021. So that's one of the things I, I want to do is to reach out of all the, to all of those, um, those couples and to, to try to connect with them and to, to say that there'll be prayers there for the, all those who, whose weddings have been disruptive and, um, and try try to connect with them in some way, but having said that, you know people have become more more resilient. I think as as things have moved on, and people are just just know that this is a really difficult situation to be in. And of course, one of the uh, one of the horrible side effects of, of lockdown is uh, has been on relationships, you know, people getting divorced and yeah. uh, on the rise. Um, and domestic violence has been hugely yeah. increased during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. But I I think that that's you know that w one day in the year when when um, you do really get into trouble if you haven't bought flowers or chocolates. Um, it, it's a great day to connect with people, isn't it? And to, to remind them that uh, there's yeah. something more to this love business and staying in love. Yeah. Um, th th there's something about the uh, maintenance uh, is a kind of uh, is a kind of love. It's in a a, a Fanthorpe poem, I think. Um, that the the, the careful con ongoing construction of love um, through lots of little things. Um, it's a lovely it's a lovely way of thinking of of love once the uh, once the initial falling in love bit has, has perhaps uh, worn off, and, uh, worn off a bit. Yeah, yes. very wise words. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Um, and uh, at the end of your article, um, you mentioned about uh, other opportunities of, of adopting uh, secular um, uh, sort of festivals uh, within our worship. Um, uh, one of the things you mentioned is, of course, is, um, is NHS Day, which I th uh, remind me when when that is. is it, uh... It's in July and it's early July. Okay. Um, and I, I know we've discussed, haven't we, doing an article for the Sunday by Sunday, um, supporting, helping people to support the NHS on that day. Yeah. So the next uh, the next edition that we're working on at the moment of Sunday by Sunday will include um, article, an article and uh, um, suggested music and hymns and anthems for NHS Day, which uh, hopefully we can 
really make something of and probably talk about uh, in a forthcoming video. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, Chris. Good to see you, you and uh, see you again soon. Super, thank you. Faith, hope and love makes an ideal anthem for St Valentine's Day. 
for churches that are streaming their services uh, with music downloaded from a church near you, we hope that it'll be available to download by then. For those making recordings with virtual choirs, we are supplying a download version that you can send around to your choir members, uh, together with rehearsal and click tracks to enable learning and recording. And that's available from rscmshop.com. Uh, and I'm now joined by the composer of the anthem, Joanna Forbes Lestrange. Hello, Jo. Hello. Happy New Year to you. And to you, Tim. Can you tell us a little bit about Faith, Hope and Love and why you wrote it? Yes. Well, my lovely foster parents were celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary a couple of years ago. And my foster father, who's also actually um, a priest and a keen amateur singer himself, um, asked if I would write a setting of this famous passage from Corinthians um, for their wedding anniversary celebrations. And so it was lovely, actually. We had a service in the little church in Bisley in Surrey, which was the choir that I first sang with when I was seven years old. And the choir there performed it. And they're, a, you know, not a, a, an enormous choir and they don't like um, difficult music. So I deliberately wrote it with them in mind. And as it turns out, it suits um, a lot of parish church choirs, soprano, alto, and a single male line, mm -hmm. um, and a not too off-putting organ part. And, oh, I mean, it was just one of those pieces that just came to me very quickly because I knew the choir so well, and I knew my uh, foster parents so well, and I just set those beautiful words. Mm. It's, a, it's a very, very beautiful thing. And uh, you've been composing for the RCM now for a well, three or four years, I think. Um, but in that time, you've co composed a string of hits. I mean, it's quite remarkable. Um, I guess it all started off with the St. Helens service, a communion setting for your local church in, um, in Hertfordshire. Uh, and by the way, folks, if you're looking for a really good congregational setting in a tuneful, popular style, do give it a go. Um, but how did, how did that all come about? Yes, well, that was because um, my stepmother-in-law, <laughs> I have a lot of parents, my stepmother-in-law who sings with St Helen's Church Choir in our village, she, it was her idea to commission a new setting of the communion service, so the, the mass, but with congregational um, involvement, um, which I thought was a, just a brilliant challenge. And so obviously something that was interesting enough for the choir to enjoy learning, but something that wasn't of putting me difficult for the congregation to join in with. And now it's just so lovely. I went on Christmas day and they sang one of the movements and just to hear them sing it, it's become part of their regular repertoire. So I wrote, uh, I set each movement very deliberately so that the choir would sing a phrase and then the congregation would repeat. And then there would be sections for the choir only and sections for the congregation to join in. So much so that somebody coming to church for the first time who, who doesn't read music or who didn't um, want to look at the music could just join in. And that's what's been happening. And it's really nice to see that it's worked in that way. And something that's modern, but not, not you know, it's a combination of traditional church music that I grew up with, but with a slightly modern slant um, and in fact, um, my friend Mark Armstrong wrote some wonderful band parts, um, piano and um, drums and bass, um, which some churches have really enjoyed using, but there's also just the traditional organ part. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and a couple of months just before the first lockdown uh, started, we published your, sets, your set of praises and responses. Mm. Um, which I think were, were, they pub, uh, were they commissioned by an American choir. Yes, yes, that's rather, right. Uh, they obviously don't um, recognise the Queen as being... No, uh, no, they say, oh Lord, save the States, but I think there's never been more appropriate. So. <laughs> 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 yes, that was really lovely. Um, a choir in um, North Carolina commissioned those and they've been done such a lot. I, I'm absolutely thrilled. I, I never really imagined I would write um, a set of praises and responses, but actually I really enjoyed it and I'm thrilled that so many choirs 
are enjoying singing them. I think a lot of choirs now are very aware of, um, more aware anyway, of female composers mm -hmm. than they used to be. And um, certainly a lot of uh, choir directors that I know had pledged to include at least one piece by a female composer in every even song which is all very well, but there was a paucity of settings of the <laughs> praises and responses. It's not all the material out there. Uh, exactly. Because, yeah. uh, and your, um, uh, your King's College service, uh, which uh, you wrote for Ben Parry at uh, King's College Cambridge, um, have also, uh, they've also been very popular. You know, there's some yeah. Oh, I really loved doing that. Yes, Ben was, it, it was written for the um, King's Voices, which is the mixed, chamber choir that does the even songs on a Monday evening. Um, and yes, he he wanted something that was challenging because, you know, they're a, they're a very um, accomplished choir, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too off-puttingly difficult that other choirs couldn't also mm. sing it. And um, uh, I've been thrilled with, again, with um, the, the responses that I've had from-, yeah. from I mean, it's a I really approachable that. setting, isn't it? That's the probably the, the great thing about your music is it's, it's really tuneful and uh, and accessible. Well, that's my background, you know, although I ended up being a professional singer and performing for all those years with choirs like Tenebrae, doing impossible music, and I love to sing impossible music, I like <laughs> the challenge of it, but my background is very much in the um, parish church choir, you know, I started singing in my little tiny parish church choir when I was seven, and I didn't sing anything um properly sort of challenging until I became a student and I don't particularly enjoy as a worshipper hearing difficult music um when I'm in church uh, I, I I really try to tread that line between making the music interesting but also making it very much serve the text so Berio doesn't really work in the liturgy then I love Berio <laughs> but I wouldn't like to hear it in church <laughs> Finally, we're about to hear your anthem, Words from the Cross, uh, which you, you composed, uh, I suppose, about this time last year. Mm -hmm. um, and because of lockdown, never really uh, sort of got any, any foothold. Um, hopefully this year uh, will have just come out of lockdown in time for Passion Tide. Um, tell us a little bit about Words from the Cross. Yes, well, this was words that I wrote, but very much based on the seven last words from the cross, um, fleshed out a little bit to make it scan. Um, and I wrote it, it's very strophic and it's very um, homophonic and it's almost sort of hymn-like really. Um, and I'm, yes, I, I, I was so thrilled because the, I asked the Swingle singers if they would um, record it with me um, just as we went into lockdown. So I think for all of us, it was our first experience of this whole sing your own line and then have it joined together. But because we know each other's voices so well, mm. um, somehow it worked. And we made a little um, YouTube video and put that out and we filmed it in my, filmed some of it in my garden. So I remember it all so clearly. It was very <laughs> weird time that the first lockdown and now it's become the sort of new norm, these remote recordings. But um, yeah, so it's it's simple and moving. Um, again, I, I just wanted it to be about the words. Um, and I think that sort of strophic verse, chorus, verse, chorus um, approach, sometimes, you know, traditional, the hymn, the hymn structure is just the best way to serve those kinds of words. Thanks very much, Joe. It's been great to speak to you. And Thank here you. is words from the cross. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much.
himself for love, he said to his mother and John, Son, behold your mother, and mother, behold your son. Suddenly up to God he cried, Why have you forsaken me? Then down to the people by the I'm now joined by Andrew Eris, Director of Music at St Martin in the Fields in London. Andrew, can you tell us a little bit about a church near you and its resource hub and how St Martin's became involved in it? Um, so St Martin's became involved uh, and, and our music team with the Church of England uh, digital team right at the beginning of lockdown. Um, the as many of you will remember, the very first weekend of lockdown, on I think it was the 22nd of uh, March, the Archbishop of Canterbury did a service for Mothering Sunday from Lambeth Palace Chapel, just as everything uh, everything was closing down in the country. Um, and uh, a quartet of our St Martin's Voices from St Martin in the Fields recorded the music for the service. Um, and it was an it was an amazing recording session. It was it was late one evening, just before lockdown, and we and we recorded hymns like Lord of All Hopefulness. Now thank we all our God, um, and some um, of the RSM music from the big um, from the big blue book, as we as we like to call it at St Martin's. Um, and this service was broadcast on Radio Four on fifty, I think it was fifty different local radio stations, uh, and also it was the first of the weekly Church of England online services. And then after that, because we got quite a big um, set of uh, pre-recorded music, uh, luckily at the beginning of lockdown, um, we. Uh, a lot of our music was used in the weekly uh, Church of England services. Um, but then after Easter, um, so we were about two months into, uh, into lockdown, we had the idea, and myself and Adrian Harris, who's head of the digital programme at the C of E, of how can we resource churches who were, um, be, who were doing live streamed music um, or live streamed services, but uh, needed a music resource, and in particular, rights free music resource that they could use for their Facebook uh, live broadcasts, for their YouTube broadcasts. So this idea came about um, about whether we could record some new music um, each week and that's when uh, the conversation started with the um, RSCM and the C of E and then 
uh, ever since then we've been producing um, five pieces of music uh, each week based on the Sunday by Sunday resources, which are available um, midway through the previous week on the uh, Church of England's Church Near You uh, resource hub. And it's grown from strength to strength and it's been a really good um, project to be a part of. So, yes, I, I think I was, uh, joined the project, if you like, in, back in April. Um, so I think you've done, is it four hymns, uh, four hymns for every week plus an anthem? Um, how, how many, how many uh, musical items are there uh, available now, do you think? Um, we tend to leave about kind of two or three months worth of items on, on the hub at, each, at, at any one point. So. Um, it's a really, really um, uh, kind of rich resource. And in particular, at the moment, we've had a particular special resource for the um, Advent, Christmas and, and Epiphany season. Uh, alongside the hymns, so um, as you said, we've got four hymns and one uh, anthem each week. Um, we've also recorded two different uh, mass settings, which was something that many clergy in the church were asking for, but, um, that this was one of the really big gaps that they had in terms of their live stream output. Um, and whether we'd be able to provide that as well. So the the, the two masses by uh, Peace Mark Nardone and David Thorne um, are staying on the hub every week. So uh, so clergy and, and music and uh, music directors can pull that resource off whenever they whenever they need it. So I mean, who who, who do you think is it is it really intended for? Is it uh, 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 local churches that are streaming their services, or is there anything else that? Um, I think it's. It's predominantly aimed at churches where um, um, they may not have a, a kind of regular music resource um, and also churches where, particularly in these periods of deeper uh, lockdown as, we're, as we've kind of just uh, entered at the moment, um, music resources may not be so readily available. So this is absolutely not about replacing pre-existing resources. This is about facilitating and, and really trying to help kind of fill the gaps where it might be really hard to, to, to help local churches um, with the needs at any at any particular moment. And I know that very early on in lockdown, a lot of churches were struggling by um, only being able to find, you know, the only recordings they could find of hymns were things that you might find on CDs, but obviously you couldn't get the permission to use them. So hopefully this has really managed to fill in, uh, fill in a gap there. Uh any idea how many uh, of the pieces on the hub have been downloaded so far? Um, we had a look just before Christmas and, and it had reached um, half a million individual uh, downloads, which is absolutely huge. Um, and I think a lot, of the, we were certainly at well over a quarter of a million in the lead into kind of October, November. Um, but then we decided um, in October, as you know, as we saw what might be happening and what the challenges would be in the Christmas period, um, that instead of just recording kind of five pieces of music for Christmas, we'd make it something much, much bigger. Um, so over Christmas, we released, it, it's a bit of a blur because it was, a, it was quite a busy month, uh, but nine Christmas, nine Advents, nine Epiphany hymns, um, a fairly significant block of um, choral music and, and children's choir music, including some from the newest, the new RSCM uh, Christmas publication. Um, we released organ tracks for people to sing along to from home for all of those um, Advent, Christmas and Epiphany hymns and some contemporary tracks as well. So I think it was 70, I think it was 73 or 74 tracks um, we released in mid-November for the Christmas period. And um, I think they've been used really, really, Really widely, particularly as you know, different parts of the country have been through um, different levels of lockdown over over the festive period. Sure. Um, how can churches get access to to the hub? Because I know uh, some people have found yeah. difficulties in 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 doing that. Um, so, uh, a church near you is the resource part of the Church of England website. So, uh, any Church of England clergy. Um, or lay people associated with a particular church, or every every church can get a password login access to it. Obviously, it needs to stay be behind a kind of password system because of the whole issue about the copyright of the material. Um, and then as soon as you uh, get access to that, which you can do through the Church of England digital resource team, um, within that, there's the music resources and a whole load of other resources um, uh, as well. It's a really, really, uh, rich offering and then all that we ask is that you have a current ccli license with the streaming add-on uh, which is an option that th i think that they introduced around about a year ago yeah. um, and it's not too expensive that streaming add-on and it then it means that 
um, all of that music you can then use for your online services. Um, you need to report it to CCLI, um, but there are no other costs involved beyond just having that CCLI license. And all of the, the actual recordings of music are all offered for free from the, uh, for, for free from the hub. Mm. It really is a, a, a really, uh, it's a huge resource, isn't it? It's uh, uh, hopefully being um, used to great effect in, in churches around the country. Uh, and, and, and from our perspective, it's been a, a wonderful project for our choral scholars to get involved with and also our uh, St Martin's Voices uh, after that. So during the deepest part of lockdown, we, um, we did all of these recordings uh, remotely. So as, as I'm sure um, many of you will have, um, many people have experienced is this, um, the complication of doing remote recordings when you're, you know, you're recording individual lines and and creating backing tracks and spending many, many hours editing it. Um, so we did that for the first three months or so uh, with all the hymns and anthems. And then from mid-July onwards, when we were allowed back in St. Martin's for closed door recordings, uh, we then moved that into very carefully uh, socially distanced recordings with nine singers, of which the singers meet now once a week and uh, record those hymns and often other music needed for other Church of England services. And um, sometimes it's some material for the um, Church of England daily prayer app. Um, but actually there's been a kind of secondary benefit from our, from our end, which is that it's been a really bleak time for musicians and some of the, some, uh, and a lot of our um, singers. And actually this has given, it's given a kind of regularity um, to, to what, and given them a real kind of sense of purpose through a time that's been really, really a really difficult part of their lives. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, it's really helped to keep the community of music at St. Martin's alive through this, through this horrible period. Yeah. Well, I had a, uh, had a composer, um, one of the, the Christmas carols that you recorded, uh, get in touch with me last week because so, um, uh, we had posted it on our, on our website and they just uh, thought it, um, I presumably hadn't let them know, but <laughs> uh, they said what a beautiful recording it was, how beautifully sung it was. So it's, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, finally, uh, do you know if there's one piece uh, that has been downloaded more than any other? Um, I, I, I was kind of asking about this before Christmas. I mean, you know, certainly some of the one or two of the really well-known hymns that we've done, you know, we did Laws of All Hopefulness, I think, um, was in sort of um, quite late, actually, in sort of August, September time. Um, I mean, the, the things that got downloaded far more than anything else were the, were the, the Christmas material. Mm -hmm. um, this had, I think, we, I think someone said it was around about 100,000 downloads in the first week alone in the Christmas material in terms of individual tracks, uh, which is absolutely huge. So I think, um, um, yeah, I think I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, but I'm, I'm fully expecting Heart the Herald Angels Sing and you know, Commonly Faithful to be pretty high up there. Yeah, and I've just given you the list, uh, taking you up to uh, Passion Tide. So um, you've got your work cut out for I mean, I mean, it's it's the scary thing, isn't it? That as soon as Christmas is over, with with kind of Easter where it sits, we're actually into um, into Ash Wednesday in, yeah. in the not too yeah. distant future. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Andrew, for joining us, and uh, we look forward to hearing more recordings from St Martin in the Fields. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder that the Church of England musical resources can be found at achurchnearyou.com. As Andrew mentioned, if you don't already have a login to the site, you can get one by emailing the Church of England digital team. It may be that your vicar already has login details. Joanna Forbes Lestrange's music can be found on our web shop, and they usually include demonstrations of the music recorded by the composer and her husband. Don't forget that the RSCM COVID guidance can be found at rscm.org.uk. Finally, the RSCM is a charity and we do not receive funding from the state or the church. Please consider a donation to help us in our work to support church music. Thank you very much for watching.